Hello everyone, Wise Guy here, and today I want to talk about Episode 9, the uh, Advanced Application Series is starting now. Today we're going to go over Recycling and Terminating. Um, now, most of you know in IC2 there's an item called a Recycler, which I have here in my hands. You make that by doing a generator, or excuse me, a compressor, with three pieces of dirt, two pieces of refined iron, and glowstone dust. And your recycler is going to make scrap for you, and scrap's really important because when you get a mass fabricator, scrap is what amplifies that and allows it to cook up very, very fast. Now, I'm not going to show the mass fab part in the test world here, because I do have one set up on the server, and I think it will help you out a little bit more to see that. Um, what I do want to talk about, though, is just the recycler and why you would want to terminate to that. And then I'm also going to get into a little bit more advanced things with uh, terminating excess cobble and sand, stone, and um, to make stone and glass, and just things like that, basically, uh, that you wouldn't necessarily think of, or maybe you would. But um, it's just a few setups that I'm doing on the server right now that I think are pretty cool ways of using the Terminus module. Uh, so speaking of the Terminus module, for this build, we are going to need a recycler. Terminus module for each recycler you're placing. An extractor module of your choice. I'm using Mark III because they're faster. And you're going to need a chassis Mark II at least. For recyclers, sometimes you're going to need higher than that. Um, for example, I have Mark Vs on my recyclers, and I'm using about three or four Terminus modules right now. Um, there just depends on how many items you're trying to get rid of and terminate. And again, I'll kind of go into the reason why I have so many um, as we move forward. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get started on this. Alright guys, so real quick, you'll notice that these are still running and my uh, generator does not have anything in it right now. So I actually ran out of coal in my system between episodes and I put a few low voltage solar panels back here um, just to go ahead and power up the machines and keep a constant supply and again that's just more so for demonstration purposes here. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and break this connection here. I'm going to break this connection up here and I'm going to put a new piece of fiber cable back here. So if you remember from before, we had fiber cable running from behind to go to all of our points, and uh, that's where my um, energy is coming from, from the solar panels. Now I'm going to go ahead and place down my recycler, and that's going to start getting power from the fiber cable behind it and the low voltage solar panel systems. Now with this, we want to go ahead and put, it, again, at least a Mark II chassis pipe. Now on our chassis pipe, we're going to open up the interface and put a terminus module and an extractor module. We're going to set this extractor to extract from the side. The reason why we know that is when we open the recycler's interface, scrap is produced on the side here. Items feed into the top, which is why the terminus is on top. Now on the terminus, I have a few things in my inventory that I'm going to go ahead and set to scrap. So most people have way more dirt than they need, so let's set that there. Let's set cobble there. Um, maybe I was cooking up a lot of stone. We'll go ahead and put stone there. And basically what this is doing, guys, is saying that if there's no more room for dirt in inventories that are requested, go ahead and terminate it here. It has the lowest priority, which means that it will not go here unless there's absolutely nowhere else for it to go. So you can put your cobble here, your stone, anything that you have in storage that when you fill up, you want to have terminated over here, will get extracted and then put out through the default route right now, which is our ender chest. The reason why it's going to the default route is there's no scrap in storage anywhere yet. And that's where the mass fabricator comes in play. Um, you might want to store some scrap in case you're producing more than your mass fab can eat, but uh, otherwise you would have your mass fabricator set up with an item sink similar to our furnaces and our macerators, and that way we can make our UU matter instead. Again, I'll show you that when we move on to the server a little bit later. So guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this connection now. And now we know that, again, any items that are coal, or excuse me, uh, dirt, stone, or cobble will end up in the recycler if there's no other place for it to go. So in the ender chest here, let's go ahead and get some extra cobble. Just get a few stacks. And when I put these in, we'll see that they're going straight to the storage area. They aren't coming over to the recycler. Now. On contrary, dirt does not have a home right now in my storage area. So, if I get a few stacks of dirt, and I'm going to use my ender bag for this setup so you can see this happen, we're going to see that dirt go right into our recycler and then scrap being produced and pulled out. Now here comes a quick sort for dirt, and it's going right into our recycler here where the recycler is making scrap. 
Now the one issue you'll have is items will be bouncing back and forth between the quicksort and this, and the reason why is that this can only hold a stack of 64, while the quicksort is sending all the dirt possible to that area. It doesn't realize that it cannot hold uh, more than just the 64 here. So you're going to have a little bit of bounce back, and there's ways to help prevent that as well. And again, on the server I'll show you how I'm doing that. Um, I wouldn't consider it an advanced setup necessarily, but you're going to be using hoppers and a few more pipes to get it set up that way. Okay, and there goes the scrap, and again we can double check our ender chest here. And you can see that the scrap's piling up here because we don't have it in storage. If I go in and pick this up, and put it in a chest that already has a item sync module or a polymorphic item sync on it, like this one here for example, Look at all that iron we cooked up last episode. We'll put scrap here and all future scrap will be sent to that location instead of being sent anywhere else. And that bounce back is definitely annoying right now, but we can go ahead and prevent that. Again, we're just going to get a couple stacks of dirt and I'm going to demonstrate how we can prevent the bounce back. I'm going to open this chest, which also has a module on it, and I'm going to put a stack of dirt in here. Now it's always going to know that this is where dirt's home is, so you can see that it quick sorted all the extra dirt that was bouncing around to this area, and it's going to keep filling this up. Now once this chest is completely full, the home for dirt is full, then all the dirt will start going to the scrap pile instead. So I'm just going to quickly fill up every slot here with another item other than dirt. I'm going to grab a few stacks of this, and let me go ahead and just uh, fill this up guys and for demonstration purposes I'm going to cut the video and save you guys a little bit of time. Alright guys, so I went ahead and filled every slot here with something other than dirt and what that's going to do is basically say that the home location for dirt is full now because it won't be able to stack with coal or logs or anything like that and it's going to start terminating the rest of the dirt so I did want to demonstrate that for you guys as well. We'll go in here. I'm just going to put a stack of dirt in here and we'll see it go right over to our chest. I put a, or excuse me, to our recycler. So I put a stack of dirt there, it's going to be quick sorted out, and it's going to get recycled because the home location's full. And again, that's what the terminus is doing, is it all its home locations are, whole, are full. And I'm just going to change this here. I realize it's uh, snow the, snowing a lot because our admin installed um, the Christmas craft mod. And uh, if I had music turned up, you'd be able to hear that as well. But uh, there's some Christmas jingles going on in the background too. So it's kind of nice, but uh, I don't like snow too much. So um, one other thing I wanted to talk about before we go onto the server, guys, is that I want to talk about barrels from factorization. So I have a barrel here. They're very, very cheap, and they only require seven logs of your choice with a slab of your choice. And they can be whatever type of wood you want. You can mix and match. That would give you one barrel and the barrel holds just under what a diamond chest holds, but the kicker is it can only hold one item. It, that is, if you put dirt here, it can only hold dirt, and it's not going to tell you anything else. Um, you cannot put cobble in here afterwards. We can go ahead and try to do that real quick. It can't do that. It doesn't have to be a block. It could be uh, pipes. It could be um, stone brick. It could be torches, whatever you want it to be, food seeds, that'll all work. When you right click it tells you how much dirt or whatever the item is that's in here. And when you left click it will come out. And I think if I do that right now because I'm in creative it's going to break my barrel. And I think I got rid of the barrels that I had here as well. So let me go ahead and grab myself another one. For this purpose I want to go ahead and just use dirt in here. And we'll put a few stacks of dirt. So we'll see how that works when we do that. It adds up the stacks and it says 2 times 64. And If I put a half stack here, now it's going to say 2 times 64 plus the extra that are left over. That doesn't make a full stack. Uh, you can also see scrap in the background being made from the extra dirt that was being fed into the recycler from previous. That's pretty cool. So there's still quite a bit of dirt here. Now, barrels do work with logistic pipes, contrary to popular belief. The issue with them, though, is that you must feed into the top because it's a barrel, you can only feed into the top of it, which makes sense. A barrel with a hole in the side that you're trying to feed into isn't going to help you too much. You have to feed from the top down. Uh, now, you can also only provide from that barrel if the pipe is on the side or the back or underneath. Um, I tried putting a provider pipe on top. It doesn't work. I believe you can extract, but I don't, uh, I don't recommend using an extractor module or an extractor pipe if uh, there's not one. So what I'm doing is I just have a provider pipe here. And I'm going to go ahead and smack right here. 
and put a provider pipe. Now what that's going to say is that I can provide dirt from this area just like if it was a chest. We're going to be able to provide from the second, from the side there. And on the top, I'll put a chassis pipe. And I have Mark II here, but normally you would probably use just a Mark I with a polymorphic item sink. The reason why we're using polymorphic is we can only ever have one item in here, dirt. Or whatever the item is of our choosing. So there's no reason to do anything else. Now in our ender chest, we'll go ahead and demonstrate this real quick. If I put dirt in there, it'll get sorted out. It'll try to fill the home locations, whether it's this one or the one in there. Now you can see that this still says five stacks, and sometimes it takes a minute to update and it'll update to seven stacks or however many you put in. So let's just go ahead and get some more dirt and you'll see that that changes over time. I'm also going to show you one more thing before we move on. So now it says 8 when I added a stack myself because it just took a minute to update and now it says 19. So sometimes that face just takes a while to update and if you right click a few times it'll force an update. Um, I think I put all dirt in there because I right click twice on it. But if we go ahead and just get some more dirt It'll get sorted out, and we'll just see that this still says 19. Then I right-click a few times, and it'll eventually update and say the correct number. Now it says 24. Alrighty, so um, with that, guys, I think the only other thing I wanted to cover is you can also get an extra-dimensional storage for the barrel upgrade. It does take dark iron, and I'm not going to get into how you make dark iron and stuff too much. just wanted to say that with this, you can right-click, or excuse me, shift right-click. It gives that little border upgrade, and it actually makes the barrel hold even more uh, than a diamond chest. So it is one item only, but more than a diamond chest, and it's a great way to store things like dirt and cobble that we have so much excess of. Um, to demonstrate that you can pull with a provider pipe on the side, I'm going to go ahead and break this real quick and put a supplier pipe. This is just so I can actively call dirt, and I'm going to make sure we always have a stack of 64 dirt in here. Now you can see that this barrel is providing dirt, and we can see this number countdown right here, so we know exactly how much is being fed out. It's being fed into the recycler, and the scrap's still going to be extracted with the extractor module. Now, there is no extractor module here on the side, so we would still have to put an extractor module in. And I'll just put a Mark II chassis pipe here on the side. Getting a little bit tight. And now we're extracting all the, all the scrap as well. Uh, you can see that this is inventory is ticked towards the recycler, not towards the barrel, with the orange dash that way, and that's the way we're going to want it. So that's just another option here. Um, you wouldn't want to put a supplier on your recycler unless you don't want to ever keep any dirt or anything like that. Uh, I just wanted to show you that so it can actively pull out of this inventory, which it's doing. We'll see this 47 countdown some more as it requests more pieces of dirt. So guys, I hope that helps. Um, now speaking of cobble and dirt and keeping some of it, there are a few more things that you can do that are kind of more advanced setups, and I'm doing them on my server, so I'd like to demonstrate that with you. Uh, I'm going to run over there, and I'll be right back. Alright guys, now the fun begins. So I want to show you a couple more, what I feel is advanced setups. It wasn't something I thought of right away, and it took me a little bit of uh, a processing to figure out how I wanted to do this. So Thermal Expansion is another mod we have, and we have this wonderful thing called an Igneous Extruder, which allows you to produce cobble, stone, or obsidian as you need. Right now I'm just producing cobble, and basically you need lava on one side and water on the other. I'm pumping water in here, and lava in from this giant iron tank from Railcraft. I showed that in an earlier episode. Um, so basically, with the constant supply of cobble, there's a few things I can do with that. Now I have a chest in here that's completely stocked full of cobble. Now it's a diamond chest full, so I don't think I'm going to run out anytime soon. But if I do run out of cobble for some reason, it will start filling up my cobble here again. Now where's all my other cobble going, you might ask? Well, I'm using terminus modules to go ahead and take care of my extra cobble. Now, if you see what I have in my electric furnaces here, I have cobblestone and sand on my furnace. And it's on a terminus, not the item sink. You can see item sink has all my ore dust and ores that can't be macerated but it doesn't have cobblestone or sand. And the reason why I'm doing a terminus module is this way, I can have a constant supply of cobble in a chest over there. Once that chest is full, it terminates to my furnace and makes smooth stone. Now, that's really cool because if you look over here, now I can have a full chest of cobblestone, and then I can also make sure I always have a full chest of smooth stone. So that comes in handy because the next step that I do with that is, okay, now I have a full chest of smooth stone. Does all that smooth stone get terminated to my recycler? No, of course not. 
there's something else we can make with it. So I set up an auto crafting table here. I'll show you that right here. Try to break that snow on top from Christmas craft. And on my auto crafting table, I have the pattern of four stone makes four stone bricks. I mean, you see stone being pumped in here because I am making constant cobblestone right now. But how am I filling this auto crafting table? Well, with this Mark II chassis, of course, I have a terminus module sending stone here. So once my stone chest is full, it terminates stone to the auto crafting table. And auto crafting tables are set up to automatically place items in the correct order. So then when the extractor, which is set up to extract from the side, pulls out of the auto crafting table, it's pulling out the stack of four bricks once this pattern's filled. Completely automated. All I had to do was just set up some terminus modules and my polymorph got him sinks on the correct chest. Now finally, there's not much I want to do with stone bricks right now. So I have a full diamond chest of stone bricks. And once that diamond chest is full, if we check our recyclers here, I have a terminus module with stone bricks on it. And guys, this is where I was saying before, you might want to have um, a Mark V chassis pipe, or even a Mark IV or something like that. Um, if you open up here, I have three terminus modules. So my first one has excess seeds, excess logs, uh, excess apples, netherrack, poisonous potatoes, because I never store those, excess glass, and if you remember, I'm terminating sand. So basically, once my sand chest is full, all sand gets turned to glass. Once my glass chest is full, all glass gets turned into the recycler to make scrap. I'll probably make that turn into a once all glass is full, make glass panes with an auto crafting table, but at this time I haven't set that up. I also have hummus here, rubber, and obsidian. So basically what that's doing is again all excess of those items once I fill up my diamond chest will terminate here or if I don't have a diamond chest of it for example the poisonous potato then it will go in and go that route. Um, I have flint, gravel, dirt, oak saplings, um, compost, weed, and some of these are doubled. I just need to clean it up some and then finally my stone bricks. My other two recyclers actually have the same thing. And one thing I wanted to note here, guys, I think I said in the last episode, but there was no extractor module up here. And the reason for that is I have hoppers here. So obviously, guys, if I'm pumping multiple items through the same network here, and there's dirt, cobble, and sand, and it's all going to one recycler, then you need to have a hopper, which gives you a few inventory spaces here to play with. You can actually stack hoppers on top of each other, so you can have a stack of stone bricks, a stack of stone, a stack of cobble, and a stack of dirt in one recycler, plus the internal stack of whatever item is here. If you have more hoppers, you can just increase that there. The downside is that you're going to need to put another chassis pipe, at least a Mark I. Um, I don't see why you would need anything other than that at the bottom. And the reason why you're going to need that is for your extraction. So underneath each machine, I have a chassis Mark I pipe that I'll go ahead and show you real quick. We are lagging just a little bit, guys, so I apologize for that. So underneath each machine I have a chassis mark one with my extractor module and it's set to the side and that's just feeding into my same network that I have everything else in. And again guys the reason for that is that I wanted to have a hopper on top and the hopper can't have an extractor module on the chassis pipe above it because if you do it'll extract from the inventory of the hopper not from the inventory of the machine. Now lastly guys I want to show the mass fabricator. So you can see that I did add a little bit of pipes here from the last video. I took away my lever, and I'll show you how I'm controlling this mass fab now instead. So I have an extractor module set here, and we're extracting from the top, UU matter. And my scrap is being fed from the bottom. And if we go underneath here, you can actually see how this setup works without a lever to make sure that I'm only running this when I have scrap. So you can see right now progress is not improving. But then once I get a piece of scrap, which will be just a minute, then this will start running again. So you'll see a piece of scrap fall, and then you'll see this increase again. It should be just any second now. We should get a piece of crap. Excuse me, a piece of scrap. I shouldn't call it a piece of crap. <laughs> and if that's not working, then I'll just drop some cobble in real quick. Maybe I'll just drop some dirt in. Okay, I'm going to drop some dirt into my recycler. And this will start making scrap, and you'll see when the scrap fills up here, this progress is going to increase again. I'm trying to figure out why this isn't running right now. Alright, well, the reason why we're not running, I believe, is because I think I have a item sink now on a terminus module over there that's keeping um, scrap over there before it gets sent here. Now, I do have a supplier pipe underneath. Okay, now we have scrap here. 
There we go. Now we have Scrap and the progress is running. So it just took a minute or two for that to process through, guys. But this is running completely automated, and if you apply a redstone signal, which is why I had the lever here before, to a mass fabricator, it turns it off. So when I didn't have Scrap, I would flip it, the switch on, and that would turn off my mass fabricator. And then I'd have to run over and flip the switch again. So what I did is I took a gate instead from my lovely assembly table I set up over there. And on the gate itself, I have a supplier pipe that says always keep scrap in here, a stack of 64. And then on the gate I say if the inventory is empty, apply a redstone signal. I'm not going to put full energy, but we'll put full energy too, I guess. Let's do that. So this is an inventory, let's see. Let's just leave it as is for now, I guess. So basically, again, if he has an empty inventory, which means there's no UU matter because that's being extracted anyway, and there's no scrap, apply a redstone signal. So when I take all the scrap out of here, you'll see that this light is on now right here, and that's turning off my device. And when I add scrap back in, it turns the redstone signal off and it starts working again. So that's the way you can set up an automation process for your mass fabricator, so you're not just burning through electricity for no reason. Um, it's so much more efficient to have scrap in the mass fab, guys, that I really recommend that's the way you do it. Now finally, I guess I'll just give a quick tour of what I've done so far. I moved my books from Miscraft over here. Um, I moved my uncrafting table from Twilight Forest and a crafting table, my um, bed here, and I've started a build. I want to try to make this somewhat look like a factory on the outside, but I'm not very creative as I've said before, so I don't know how that's going to work. Um, I also have my auto crafting table wall that's going to be started here, and here is where I'm going to probably change my stone brick that I set up over there. I'm probably going to make scrap boxes and then terminate my scrap boxes. Um, I'll go ahead and show you a few other things here. So these are all item sinks. Um, I think on my mass raiders I have item sinks, and I don't think there's any other terminus modules that set up other than the furnaces that I've already showed you, and, and then the recyclers, of course. So guys, um, again, kind of a more advanced setup, or again, at least in my opinion, it was more advanced. If I could walk through my door, that would help. Um, but basically, you can terminate to an auto crafting table, and you can terminate to other machines other than just a recycler. Most people think terminate just means I'm putting it on a recycler, and they don't think about the other items that they could be making with the, uh, the core pieces that they have. So you can see over here um, on one of these chests I have a bunch of glass that's been made. I never remember because I never go through these chests. Here we go. So here's a bunch of glass that's been made for my sand because my sand chest is completely full right now. Once this glass is completely full, then I will go ahead and start terminating glass panes as well, or excuse me, just glass in general. Um, and then these glass panes I made by hand and I'll probably set up my auto crafting table with the terminus module to terminate um, pieces of glass to there to make glass panes instead because why would I waste my material when I can make something else with it. So guys, I just hope that um, that helps you some. It gives you an idea of what to do with what you thought was just scrap. Uh, a lot of people like using smooth stone, so I would say at least terminate your cobblestone to a furnace first. It does use more EU or more uh, coal if you're going to be using a vanilla furnace or a slag furnace or something from another expansion, um, thermal expansion or from a different mod, excuse me. But uh, I think that it's worth it, though, guys, to do it that way. So without further ado, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, if you have any other suggestions for videos, guys, please let me know. Uh, right now, I have a compact wheat farm that I want to go over, um, which is going to be a very sh short video. Um, basically, I have my wheat and forest farm over here. And I already did a video on my forest farm. It was my first video coming back to YouTube. Um, I'm just going to show a quick one on the wheat farm that I set up and that's kind of it for logistic pipe guys there's not too much else to cover that I can think of so if you guys like what you're seeing uh, which you seem to be please give me suggestions or questions on setups that you have I'll try to answer them as soon as I can in another video otherwise I'm gonna start doing some other mod spotlights or some mod tutorials um, I think I want to cover thermal expansion some more than likely gonna go into Thomcraft golem setups and uh, I'm not much of a spotlight in the sense of, let me just show you everything real quick and go through. I really like practical setups. So for example, I have tallow golems that are filling up water and taking out items from me right away. Um, practical setups like golems that will auto-harvest things for you if you don't have IC2 or BC, or excuse me, or Buildcraft. 
um, you know, just doing a lot of automation and really, again, practical setups. Like, why are these items here? What is the intended use? Or what are some of the cool things you can do with these items? So, guys, if you have certain setups that you want to see, please let me know. Um, Red Power 2 pre-release 6 just came out today, so thank you, LRM. I'll probably be doing some videos on her stuff once I get more familiarized with it. And I think that's going to do it. So please leave suggestions in the comments, and I'll be happy to review them and make videos. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.